right, we will go ahead and get started with Bible study. Let me, there we go. All right. Heavenly Father, we come before you in prayer just saying, thank you, Lord. Lord, we thank you so much for another opportunity to come before your throne of grace. And God, I ask that you would sit me, J.R., the man down in the true, O sovereign Lord, would rise up big inside of me, proclaiming your word of truth and placing your words <clears throat> upon my lips. Father God, we love you, we need you, and we thank you for what you're about to bless us with. It's these things we thank you for. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, everybody. So this week for Bible study, it's uh, it's quite simple, right? About a week or two ago, we talked about stress. We talked about how to deal with stress, how to combat it the proper way to respond to things instead of reacting to things like we do quite so often. It's a side effect of being human. But in regards to today, um, if you came in and heard the song that was playing before Bible study started, it's called Cry, right? I have two gospel songs that I really love that are called Cry, one by Corin Hawthorne and another one by Wes Morgan, both of which pretty much say the same thing, right? We're told by the world, by social media, by so many different, you know, people or outlets that we should be tough, right? Hold it in. Don't really burden people with what you're going through, right? Well, let me tell you what the Lord has to say about that. It's actually quite the opposite. Confide in one another, right? Tell God what's going on. We pray not just to receive blessings, not just to ask him for you know, to do something for us or for another person. But sometimes we pray just to be able to vent, to get something off of our chest. We have community so that we can share what's been going on, right? The Bible teaches us that those of us who are strong should help bear the infirmities of those who are weak. What that means is, is that if you're going through something, you should definitely share the issue that you're going through with a brother or a sister in Christ so that they better know how to pray for you and help you carry that burden. When the good Lord <clears throat> tells us that he will never leave us or never forsake us and that we are never alone because he has made his house within each and every one of us, the simple truth is, is that he literally means we are never alone in any and every situation that we go through. Whether you're dealing with the loss of someone, if you're going through a stressful endeavor, Whatever it is that you may be dealing with, even if it's the good stuff, you know, you are never alone. You have God Almighty who has made his home inside of your heart. Your spirit and his spirit are now one. Our favorite word, consubstantial, which means that y'all are of the same essence. Nothing in all of creation, according to the Bible, can remove you from God's love. No power on the earth, below it, above it, or anywhere else in existence can take God away from you because you belong to him. And as Jesus said, who can steal from a strong man except a stronger man? And because God is the strongest, no one can take us from him. On top of that, contrary to worldly popular belief, when you tell someone, preferably someone who can pray for you, what's been going on in your life, you feel better because now the weight that the enemy would love for you to try to carry has been released from you. The good Lord, our Lord and Savior Jesus, did not design us to go through <clears throat> these things, right? Originally, when we were created, we were created perfectly in his image and in his likeness. When sin entered on in, we fell from grace and now we are contorted. You know, we're misconstrued. We're we're not the same that we once were. We're we're faulty now. We have some cracks in the glass, like if you drop your phone on the ground really hard. We're messed up now. And now that we've been messed up, we needed someone to come and fix the problem, right? Well, that's what Jesus died for. He died on the cross for you and for me. And he cried out in that 12th hour, I believe the Bible says, crying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? 
One of my favorite things about the Lord saying that on the cross is because it fully expresses the human aspect of Jesus. He is 100 percent God. That's why he was able to live this life and not sin, able to save us from ourselves and from the enemy and to perform all the wondrous signs and miracles that he did. But also in that same moment, he shows us what it feels like when we're at the bottom of the barrel. It feels like we've been abandoned. It feels like, but that's the thing. It feels See, our feelings or our emotions, as the Bible tells us in the book of James, I believe, that they desire nothing more than to deceive us. You know, your feelings, those reactions that we have when you start thinking with the wrong part of your body, it it begins to put you in some very curious situations that under normal godly circumstances you wouldn't be in. But when we go through any of these things, we are never alone, right? God is always with us. God was on the cross with Jesus, the Father, with our Lord and Savior, the sonship of his essence. He was there with him every step of the way. So when we go through things, he's there with us every step of the way. So the point of crying, tears, letting it out, confessing one to another is for the simple fact that When we let it out, we turn the lights on, we shine light in that area of darkness in our life so that one, the enemy can no longer have an advantage over us. Two, we do what we have a problem doing sometimes, and that's allowing God to be God in that area or aspect of our life. When you let God do his job, well, he does it magnificently. And we reap all the benefits of allowing him to rule, reign, abide and do everything else he wants to do in our lives. Because first and foremost, he he bought our lives at a very costly price. But in doing so, it gave you and me freedom, peace of mind, peace of heart, joy, which the world cannot give and cannot take away. Uh, A blessed assurance, the ability to grow, really grow to let things go. My favorite one here, when we're going through our changes in life and the changes are always ongoing because God is ever progressive, that when you feel like you're not yourself anymore, when you feel like you can't get back to a certain place, and I learned this the other day, it's that What we have to accept as children of God is that because he's ever progressive and we're ever evolving because of his progressive spirit in our lives, stick with me here, it's that we have to come to a point in Christ where we can comfortably let go of what we thought we used to be. In doing so, there are some tears involved. Sometimes you got to cry it out, you know, as, um, As one of my favorite uh, quotes says, you know, just catch me thugging in the rain. If you don't know what that means, it does not mean what I'm implying here. But it's just when you let stuff go, when you let God be God, when you just let him have those tears, things begin to change. In the book of Revelation, it says that the Lord will wipe away every single tear that you have. That when you cry and he takes those tears, he puts them in a bottle and that those tears are used to plant new life within the garden called you. Yes, you specifically, the one I'm pointing at you. I'm talking about you. Every tear you cry, every prayer you send up, every time you just say Jesus because you don't know what else to say. He's taking all of that pain, that sorrow, that anguish, those tears, the anger, the anxiety, the frustration, every negative aspect of what you're dealing with or what you're trying to get past. He puts it in a beautiful bottle. Let me remind you of what the scripture says that pain or suffering endures for the night, but joy comes in the morning. And the last time I checked, Jesus is referred to as the morning star. Stay with me. So if God is the morning and he's ever present, that means that your period of mourning will end in the morning. Therefore, stick with me, please. If you just trust in God 
I mean, really trust him. Let's stop pretending like we trust him and just trust him. Let's really do it. Let's throw more caution to the wind, jump out on a leap of faith and just trust God because he got us this far and we're not done yet. So clearly for the rest of his plan, that's for good and not for evil to come into fruition. We have some more road left to walk. If we just trust him, well, the thing that seems like it's been going on for an eternity will end just like that. And if it doesn't end just like that, well, then guess what? Your peace, which surpasses all understanding when you talk to God, will appear. The frustration, the anxiety, the pain, the anger, whatever else is going on, it dissipates when you let God in. And sometimes the best way to let God in is to allow yourself to be broken. You don't have to pretend or try to carry about yourself like you're the strongest person in the world because baby, you're not. God is. Secondly, if you would just allow yourself to be humbled or even better yet, to humble yourself before God, cry before your father. There's nobody here to judge you for crying. There's no one here to point fingers at you and tell you that you're not good enough, tell you that you're not smart enough, not strong enough, not brave enough. No, 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 no. Not in this here family of ours. That's not how God plays. And that's not how we play. We encourage one another. We edify, which means build up one another in love. We remind each other of how much we're loved, how much we're blessed, how much God truly cares for us how wonderful we are, how we're a peculiar race of people, how we're strong, how we're mighty, how we're more than conquerors, how we can do any and everything that we set our minds to because greater is Jesus that is inside of us than our enemy that's in the world because, I mean, God wins, point blank, period, 82 and 0 perfect season, okay? Cry, just just cry. It's okay, I promise it's fine. When you let it out, you feel better. And when you feel better, what happens? Your perception changes, right? And when your perception changes, well, I believe it's Romans chapter 12. Might not be 12. Somebody wonderful will put it in the chat for me. It's that when you're not conformed to the world, but you're transformed by the renewing of your mind, Well, then you can test and see what is that good and perfect and acceptable will that God has for your life. Renewing, if we put that in a more uh, current grammatical context, means it is a perception shift. When you don't have weight on your shoulder or something covering your vision because you're too stressed out to try to look past it, It's that when the blinder is removed, when the weights are lifted off of you and you have a moment to just to breathe, to blow it out, to give it to God, you begin to see, you know what, this isn't half as bad as I thought it is. I just couldn't see past the issue at the moment. See, the tiniest thing can look real big if you put it right in front of your eye. Matter of fact, I have with me this tiny adapter. You can see how little it is, right? But if I put it to my eyeball, this is now as little as it is obstructing my vision. I can barely see the camera. I can barely see past it. It's clouding my judgment. I don't know what to do. And the closer it gets, guess what? I'm blind now. Well, that's all the enemy does. He takes these tiny insignificant issues That person that just won't stop nagging you or getting on your nerves, that issue that some family member may be going through that's driving you insane, you yourself and your inability to let your past go because you just can't accept the fact that that thing happened or whatever else it may be. And he will try to keep pushing it closer and closer and closer and closer. Well, how do you get rid of something that's in your eye? You wash it out, right? What's the best way to wash something out with water? Well, guess what? God has built you with tear ducts. And sometimes when the dam is at full capacity and it needs to blow, stop trying to fight it. Let it blow because when you cry, guess what? Those worries melt away. 
And as it washes away, it gets further and further away. See, God designed us with the ability to cry, to be able to push things out of our eyes so that once we have a moment to breathe, we can look at it and say, you know what, Father, this isn't really that bad. All I need to do is trust you a little bit longer. All I need to do is keep the faith, keep holding on. All I need to do, God, is to just trust your timing. I know, trust me, it's better. It's easier said than done. God's timing is a peculiar thing. He works in mysterious ways. His time frame may be a couple of years. Mine may be a couple of days. And I'm real disappointed when God doesn't show up in my time frame. But guess what? In his time frame, I'm growing. I'm being broken to be built back up so I can be stronger, better, more compassionate, more resilient more enduring than I once was so that when I'm out of the fire that God can use me and appoint me in the place that I need to be so that remember it's not about you it's about him and everyone else so that once I'm done with my last refinement process I can get some soul saved I can be an example of how God can will and wants to do these things in your life sometimes it just requires you to cry a little bit right that's all it takes. Some of the happiest people I know, the very happiest, are people that cry quite often, right? They don't try to hold those tears back. They don't try to fight it. They just let God use them with the natural thing that he put inside of us to wash away the worries for a moment, to give us a reprieve, to breathe, so that when we see it for what it is, it's not this big, it's really that far away. That when we see it for what it is, we say, but God, we start using our weapons of warfare that are not carnal, but are spiritual and have the power to cast down strongholds, break every vile imagination and rein it in and to subjugate everything that would try to keep a person away from the truth about who Christ Jesus is. And once you use your weapons, guess what? Satan is powerless. You slap his hands. He didn't drop his weapon. He can't pick them back up because now God is stepping on them. The blood sweeps in and washes all your sins away. You're renewed again. The slate is clean. The rap sheet is gone. My favorite part, you, you know, when you pray to God in the book of Micah, I believe that when you ask him for forgiveness, he throws it in the sea of forgetfulness, meaning it doesn't exist anymore. When you feel bad about something you did in the past, but you didn't prayed on it already and truly and earnestly sought God for forgiveness, that doesn't exist anymore. God will never make you feel bad for something that you've already been forgiven for. If you feel bad, it's either you or it's the enemy trying to bring you down so that your new perception can try to be blocked but once again greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world because sometimes when you just cry Jesus cried that it removes the blinders Jesus walked into the garden of Gethsemane in anguish praying Lord if, if you could just I don't want to go through this right and he cried tears of blood because he was so stressed out and upset and nervous and anxious but the best prayer in the whole bible nevertheless not as i will god but as you will because when he cried we're going to use the humanity aspect of jesus here when he cried what happened his own blood because of sanctified blood washed away the issue and pushed it further back I know I got to give up my life and I know it's going to be the most difficult thing this body will ever go through or any other body to touch this planet, but I got to do it for them. And here's where, like Paul tells Timothy, sometimes you got to preach to yourself. You got to be ready to preach in season and out of season. It's that what happened? I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I will never abandon you like an orphan. My strong right arm will make you victorious. I am the Lord of hosts, the King of Kings, the Prince of Peace, wonderful counselor. I'm, I'm all of the above. I'm him, literally him. And he's on our side, right? But better yet, like he told Joshua, are we on his side? And let me tell you, if you've been saved, if you've been if you've allowed that blood bought banner to be pasted over your doorpost, well, you are saved. You are on his side because, I mean, why not? But all in all, here, here's, the, here's the best part about it. And thank you, Aunt Bill, it was Romans 12. 
It's that God loves you, okay? Sometimes the way we need to handle things in a godly fashion looks completely alternative to what the world will tell you or try to have you believe. Because if you've ever seen Stranger Things and you know about the upside down, well, we live in the upside down, okay? Nothing makes sense here. And God didn't come to turn the world, you know, upside down. He came to flip it right side up because we messed it up. And now that he's come and started the process and those of us who are called Christians, which means disciples or children of God. Well, hey, hey, here we are trying to do our very best through the power of the one who strengthens us to do it all. And sometimes all you need to do in order to get past that past, to let that person go, to just say, you know what? I don't care no more. I'm going to forgive them because that's what God tells me to do. And when I forgive, I'm strengthened by letting the weight of trying to be angry go. Because it takes a lot of strength to stay mad at somebody, but it takes absolutely nothing to be joyful. And the best way to get there, as I've come to see, nine out of 10 cases, cry, let it out, talk to God, go to your prayer closet, get on bended knee, bow your head, whatever you got to do, cry. If that process sometimes involves a loved one that you can trust and just cry in their presence or on their shoulder, go for it. That's why God made community called family. And I don't mean the biological people. I'm talking about what Jesus described as family, those who are about his father's business. That's the family that I talk about. I love my biological family and thank God the bulk of them are saved. So, yes, we're family in the truest of sense. But your real family, the ones that pray for you, the ones that will stay up all night just being there with you, the ones that you can call sometimes when you can't call other people because, you know, if you call, even if they don't answer and you leave a voicemail or you send them a text, That even if they don't respond in that moment, as soon as they do, they'll pray. And we know that prayer changes things. But sometimes we have to humble self by letting those tears fly free so that we can accept the help that Jesus has already bought and paid for. That we don't need to keep purchasing our own lessons because it's not on the syllabus. But instead, we just follow God's course, which is a plan of good and not evil. It's a plan to prosper you, to bring you to an expected end, to give you a hope and a future, to see you exalted in high places among great men, as the Bible says, so that you can proclaim the word of truth and see souls get saved so the family can get extended. And like I always say, sometimes we're our biggest blessing blockers and a big blessing blocker is fighting those tears back. Let them free. I'm telling you this from personal experience as someone who had a great cry session with the Lord just yesterday. Let them go. Let them fly free. Let the Lord hold those tears so he can keep watering your garden. He is the the vine dresser, as the Bible says, or the gardener. He's tending to your garden. He's pruning all the dead parts that don't need to be there away. Your past, the people, the mindsets, whatever. And in the pruning process, it stings. It does. But you grow. And not only do you grow, but you grow better, stronger, more intertwined with God to where the root looks so conflicted. You don't even know where it starts or it even begins. And we thank him for that because we are fruit on his vine because he is the root itself. And since we're connected to the root, we have everything that we could ever hope for, want for, need for, and everything else in between. And once again, just let it go. Cry. Cry about it. It's fine. Let it go. We encourage you to bear it all before the Lord, because if you're going to bear it all before anybody, he is definitely the right one. If you can't talk to somebody about a certain thing, then just tell God. And if he ever gives you the strength or the okay to tell another soul, then you do so. But if not, you've put it in the only one who has the capable hands to change it. And if you do confide in another person, well, you've still done the same thing because you're using your resources. You've been reading what God has left here for us. Instructions on how to get through this thing called life. 
how to actually have a life, live it and enjoy it. Because again, contrary to popular belief, people would think that Christians are sticks in the mud. Baby, we're not. We love to have fun. We just have lines that we don't cross, you know, because God himself, when he gave us the things we shouldn't do, it's not to put limits on us enjoying or experiencing life. It's to keep us from getting in the stuff that will ruin us at the core of it all. So I simply leave you with this. You're dealing with something, you're going through something, you haven't cried in a while, just cry. Let it go. Let God have them. You'll feel so much better. And when your head is clear, your perception will change. And when your perception changes, well, (laughs) welcome to the renewing of your mind aspect of this here journey. It happens quite frequently. We never really stay in the same place, nor should you want to, because conformity is for the unsaved group. We here like to progress. And in progression, we have to learn to just let stuff go, accept who God is trying to get you to be and stop obsessing so much of over who you want to stay as. Because I don't want to stay as the same old me. I want to be what God has me destined to be. And to get there, we got to let stuff go. And the best way is to wash it away in his blood and let those tears fly free. So our vision is unobscured. Heavenly Father, we come before you in prayer simply saying, thank you, Lord. God, we thank you that sometimes the simplest answer is the right answer. Sometimes the simple answer is to just cry, let it out, let you have it, God, bear it all before you know exactly what we're thinking before we even think it, which is amazing, I might add. You know our prayers before we can pray them. You're working on the answer for it before we can even get them up to you. You know everything that we're going to say, do, think, the last hair down on our head and I mean you named every star in the sky and there's an infinite number to us because we can't count that high so God we simply say thank you for just being who you are our father the best father you're the mother the brother the sister you're everything that we need and you show us how much you love us with our community you bless different people in our lives to fulfill different areas Not looking at them and seeing them, but looking at your love shine through them and how much you care about us. So, Father, when sometimes we feel a little prideful or haughty about it and we don't want to let the tears fly, just encourage us to let it go. Because when we allow ourselves to be broken, we're not getting destroyed. We're just getting some stuff pruned off of us so that you can build us back up from head to toe, better, stronger, faster, more courageous, more prayerful, more zealous for you, God. And that's all we want. That's all we need. So, Father, we say thank you. Lord, if there's someone who doesn't know you the way that we do, we simply ask that you would allow them to experience you in a mighty way like we did the day that we got saved. Father God, again, we love you. We thank you. And we will be sure to give your name all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory which you so rightly deserve. It's these things we thank you for. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hello, beloved, and thank you so much for stopping by today. It's my prayer that you received something truly beautiful out of today's message, whether it's to keep pressing toward that glorious standard that God has for our lives, or if you aren't a part of the family, to come and join us as we celebrate the new life that Jesus has given us. Heavenly Father, we come before you in prayer saying, thank you, Lord. Thank you that despite all that's going on in the world, that you are God and you will always be God. We thank you for the sacrifice that your darling son Jesus paid for on that cross called Calvary, Lord. We thank you that now through the shedding of blood, there is a remission for sins and we have a true path to eternal life, God. I pray that all those under the sound of my voice would either be encouraged to keep pressing towards your throne room, God, to receive grace and mercy or to come and join the family so that they can shed off the old and embrace the new. It's these things we thank you for as you continually lead us down the paths of righteousness. In Jesus' name, amen. Again, thank you so much for stopping by. Please don't forget to like, to comment, and to subscribe. As we move forward, remember new content coming at you every Saturday, and it's our prayer that you would be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen.